I love all the same things that aggravated me na- last night aggravated me 20 years ago. No, it's like revisiting old old pet peeves. Yeah. Tunny just will often just like, what? And then I was like, witches. And then now Campbell, we've we've gone into detail, but in this one specifically, <laughs> nice ass, cutie. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> She's that. And then Versa Bulk is, oh my God, are you scared? She's scared. She's scared. She's sorry. She's sorry. She's sorry. That is Veruca Bulk. Firuza Bulk. You, no. you do a good. You do a good bulk. Love. Yeah, I, know. I just can't say her name. Gods of the Watchtowers of the North, I invoke the. Wait, 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 no. Let me be. I want to be Ruby Tyler. What's her name? Rooney. Rooney Bisbo. The lead. Who's the lead? Robin Tunney. That's what I said. A bit. Hell to the guardians of the Watchtowers. I commend thee. I guess. I invoke thee. I'm. Put you in me. To those listening, because we have more audio listeners than than viewers, uh, Lacey is doing her best Robin Tunney's weird hand impression. One of my favorite things about Lacey <laughs> is uh, like top two or three is when she gets really hung up on an actor and the way they, the weird ways they do things like run or walk or hold up their hands. And usually Lacey's like, you're going to fucking throw up when you see the way she holds up her hands. And I'm like, and I think I'm not even going to notice a difference, but I see her weird claw hands. I'm like, oh, you're oh right. All right. And the way she runs, like like she's not attached to her arms and legs, like those were afterthoughts, like she's learning. Yeah, we'll get into all of the different Please. ways that she moves, that Robin Tunney moves in this, our podcast, Load Bearing Screams. I'm Matt Jokes. And I'm Lacey Goth. And if Clearly. for all the craft heads who this is their first episode, we are a married couple and we host this podcast every week where we do a deep dive into a movie that one of us loves and we haven't seen it in a long time or whatever. That's the general rule. And, and the other one in. is generally unattached to. Getting to know it, you know? And this week we're diving into the craft. And the way we do it is we look at the history of the production of the movie. We talk about the movie in detail. If you want to just skip to the movie discussion, there's a timestamp in your episode description. Just letting you know the ropes because I know there's lots of crafties out there. Oh, is that what they're called? Oh, yeah. Okay. Big time craft. Speaking of crafty, I definitely didn't go to the Dollar Tree and buy a a bag of random looking crosses and then attach it to a necklace I already owned. You know, this is, this is, this is a Celtic cross I owned previously from all the witching I do. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to make that clear. And didn't you have black lipstick on earlier? What happened to that? Is it not there anymore? No. Okay. (laughs) Your lips look normal. It was eyeshadow. So I guess it's, should I put it back on? No, we're, we're, we're We're live. We're in the middle. Yeah, we're live. I'll this is it. going out on the air. <laughs> yeah, Lacey looked very Feruza Balk earlier. Now she looks more normal. Or maybe less like Feruza Balk and like Lacey age 14. Yeah. And I never quite got where I was going with this look. Uh, and yeah, and and I, I shouldn't have just said the 14-year-old thing because, you know, of course, this is doing it for me very much to see her with the choke collar and the the big Celtic cross and the black lipstick. I don't I even, like you know, you learn things about yourself all the time. <laughs> Uh, the craft. This is an episode we've done before. Our fourth episode of the show back in 2017. Paired with Jaws. And Paired the description said, you're going to need bigger ears to listen to this. Ah! was the opening. Good. <laughs> I like my descriptions. Oh, good. I did not listen. When I saw it was number four, I'm like, I don't even need to care what I said then. No, no one's listening to number no. four. Uh, no, I, I track our analytics. There are people who always start at the beginning. Like, don't do that. But they do. Dun, dun, dun. I don't do that. Why are they doing that? There's no way. Don't do it. Isn't it cool? Like you discover a podcast and you're like, oh, great. And I have all these episodes to listen to. You just go and you listen to them all. People do that with us like all the time. Because again, I track this stuff very carefully. You do. You mumble it in your sleep. It's 37. Um, Biggest loser. No, shit. Our loser episode is our most downloaded episode because for two years, it was the last episode we put out. So no, I need to stop saying that we've done our podcast for eight years. It's really six with a two year sabbatical. It's over an eight year period. It's only it's only been a year since we've done it regular, literally done it every week. 
we had we had stops and starts and good stretches and bad stretches and we'd skip a year skip two years i'd say the best stretch was on last week's episode she was Ah! one of the best final girls from texas chainsaw massacre 2 callback um all right we're really showing how good we've gotten over the years i've only interrupted you seven times you see somebody on youtube commented does she make it a practice to interrupt the guy all the time what somebody said that and i responded i i interrupt all the time too toil and boil and (laughs) listeners beware don't make fun of my face or my hair okay um what video sorry what video what is his name zip code list of Mm -hmm. fears what i think it was on mad max too i'm not gonna say another word this whole fucking part of the watch just watch me listen to me (sighs) Try. So, so, okay, The Craft, the, the, our fourth episode, and I remember both of us taking a big shit on the movie. I didn't listen either, but I remembered we both made a lot of fun of it. Really? It, I, I watched last night and it fucking rocked. You didn't seem like you were that into it last night. I came multiple times. You seemed like you're getting kind of angry. and No, I never got angry one time. No, I, I love all the same things that aggravated me na- last night aggravated me 20 years ago. No, it's like revisiting old old pet peeves. Yeah. It, it is it is tricky to listen to a movie with three actresses who all have very interesting vocal tics. It's, that's a lot. That's a lot. Of, that's a gumbo. How right would there. you describe this vocal tic? Um, well, a... Tunny just will often just like, what? And then I was like, oh my God. And then witches. And then Nev Campbell, we've we've gone into detail. But in this one specifically, <laughs> nice ass, cutie. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> She's that. And then Versa Bulk is, oh my God, are you scared? She's scared. She's scared. She's sorry. She's sorry. She's sorry. That is Versa Bulk. Firuza Balk. You, no. you do a good you do a good bulk, love. I know, I know. I know. I just can't say your name. Yeah, I liked it too. Mm-hmm. I liked it this time. I you know, we wanted to do horror movies this month, and you said I want to do the craft. And I was like, okay, but that's not a horror movie. That's just witches. But I was wrong. I watched it last night and I realized this is a horror movie. I mean, it doesn't start out as a horror movie, mm-hmm. but in the filmmaking, the second half of the movie is a horror movie. For and sure. a, a very effective horror movie. I, I remember being disturbed by there was never there's no jump scares, but the idea that that people who you think are your friends can even invade your dreams and will never leave you alone. They want you to leave the city. I, I've just found that entire premise like, well, what are you going to do? You turn these girls into powerful witches. You just moved. You're going to pack your stuff again. This doesn't seem fair. Yeah, not not being in not being able to to, to discern reality. Am I in a yeah. dream? They're fucking with my dream. <laughs> but in the literal like nuts and bolts of the filmmaking, there it is. You know, a house filled with bugs and snakes yeah. and and disgusting animal life, and it's creepy. It's 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 really well done. I I, I was really impressed. I, I I was really impressed with uh, how good the makeup looks with uh, with all of the stuff involving the thousands and thousands of snakes and bugs. It looks mm-hmm. really good. There's some dodgy CGI, which you can forgive because it's almost charming. It's so dated. Yeah, but it snakes. does stand out because otherwise this looks like such a good practical effects movie. I especially love the where Nancy flies at um, Sarah at the end um, after. I don't know if the dresser comes after her or, but they all end up on a wall and all the clothes go there. And then she's got to un, un, like bury her. I just remember there being a cool behind the scenes look at how they actually did that. Mm. And anyway, but that's the practical effect, right? Because mm-hmm. they're actually doing that. Okay. Yeah. I love all that. There, there, there's sometimes there's good, there's CGI augmentation. Like they, they, the, the, the levitating uh, Rochelle sequence right. they did in front of a green screen. I didn't notice while I was watching it. So mm-hmm. it's like that stuff is good. What the shitty stuff is. Yeah. The hands turning into snakes. It's a little mm-hmm. video game snakes and stuff like <laughs> that. Um, but yeah, no, this is a fun, this is a fun movie. I have, I have some issues with it sure. that we will detail. Uh, all right. Plug everybody, plug for our special bonus video adjacent to the movie this week on our TikTok, our Twitter, and our Instagram. You can watch me and Lacey discuss what are our favorite movies about magic. And I gave it a lot of thought. And it's totally not me and Lacey yelling at each other. That's about never the way our we make videos. Right. So. But yeah, TikTok uh, load bearing beams. No, sorry, TikTok load.bearing.beams, Twitter load bearing pod, Instagram load bearing beams. You can catch that. A bonus video and let us know what your favorite movie about magic is. And that's also in the episode description. 
All right, the craft. Uh, so tell tell me once again, when did you see this movie mm-hmm. first? What do you remember about it? Uh, can you tell me the year? 96. Okay. So th- it, there is a, a theme of 96 being a big year for me. And I think that is because I started going to the movie theater by myself around that time. I'd have been 12. Um, and I mean, 12, 13 is exactly when you're looking for like, what kind of, what, what type am I? I'm definitely an archetype. Which one is it? And the goth thing really spoke to me Like you, you can do goth and not have a lot of money and y- you can choose to be looked at and, and people stare at you and then you get to tell yourself like, oh, I made that choice. Um, so I would have attached this movie then. I would have definitely rented it as soon as it came out on video. I wouldn't have owned it for a long time. I didn't really, I couldn't collect until I kind of got it until I got a job. Um, I, I just, I love, I love it. I love when a slow motion walk at any point, I just like it when a, a whole group gel all of a sudden and they go from looking like one thing to this like fully just developed blossoming new thing. And so this movie does that really well. And there's enough like cozy, warm, nice moments and then it just goes all to shit. And then mm. it's like, whatever happened to those nice girls? I guess absolute power corrupts absolutely. Oh, shit. You know? Anyway, shit. just, I mean, because they are genuinely nice, two of the girls. And then they turn into complete dog shit, even by the end. So, so sorry, Nev Campbell. Or I'm who's, sorry, I'm who's, going off the, yeah. Who's uh, nice? It's it's Rochelle. Rochelle and, and, uh, and never, Tunny and Sarah, the lead. Sarah's always nice. She stays nice. No, Nev Campbell's character, I can't remember her name right now. Nev- Bonnie. Bonnie. Bonnie and Rochelle are nice. They're welcoming. They want stuff. Yeah. Yes. But- and and Feruza Balk as as uh, Nancy is the evil one. And, you know. Not evil. Just has a hard life. Yeah, she is a hard. She does have a hard life. But she's like, the way I'll react to this is to seize ultimate power. Correct. She's evil in the um she, she her her uh, her sort of inner malevolence makes the others act worse than they For would sure. and be meaner than they otherwise would be. And you it's it's kind of cool like you you think that you have witching powers. Who knows how close they've gotten to it in the past, but all of a sudden now they've got the know-how and Sarah's got the natural thing and it completes the circle and now you guys can do little things. If only you'd kept it small. Mm, yeah, That'd I mean, been fun. It does. It does escalate very, very quickly. Very quickly. Uh, now, now the beasts are coming out of the sea and washing up on the shore. That's a very startling <laughs> moment in the movie. I'm your daughter now. <laughs> That's what she says to the shark. To Manol. To Manol. These are gifts. These are my gifts. Okay, Feruza Balk. <laughs> she's what, amazing. She's a. Uh, it, is, it is a fun performance. She is clearly. Uh, hey, Feruza, do whatever you want. Go as big. You can't go big enough. It is a little obnoxious. I love every minute of okay, her. Okay, <laughs> okay. She's a little overbearing for me. I mean, oh, I, yeah. I, 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 I appreciate the effort. It's there's there's. Uh, I, I appreciate the effort. I appreciate how big she's going. I don't know that it totally works, but you know, it's. I'd rather you do that than do something not interesting. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, uh, again, oh. we didn't listen to the earlier episode, so we'll probably repeat ourselves if you have gone back and listened to that. But I, I I have this question again for you. You grew up in a very conservative religious house. Yeah. Was this movie not seen as the work of the devil and something you shouldn't see? My mom didn't chaperone what I watched. She mm. wouldn't have even known. And, and, and she didn't police what I wore. I mean, I, I, I looked very alt too. I mean, no, she, my mom just didn't, not that she didn't care, but she did not police me that way. Um, but you said that you used to pray to God to save Marilyn Manson. Yes. And were you watching this movie at the same yes. time? And it has pentagrams and devilry and well, stuff. Well, I in just it? I just thought this was make believe. I didn't really believe in witches. I never once thought that these things were actually possible. Mm. Which was actually kind of anti Christian of me because Christians do think that people do like dark arts stuff and whatever. But I just took this as just a look, as a aesthetic. I mean, there were already witchy people at my school. This is just a category of person. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it and you smell like patchouli oil, I didn't. I hate that smell. Um, but this is just a thing you could be. And so I was like, I'll be this for a little while until a boyfriend of mine tells me not to. I was reading about uh, the making of the movie and the filmmakers were saying like, yeah, goth really wasn't a thing at the time. And I'm 
like that's absolutely not true. It was a huge thing, and it was this. This is maybe the mainstream. This bit, breaking though. super into the mainstream, and maybe the characters in this movie are dressing to look goth versus things like the crow, where it's like. I'm going to me expressing my goth self is imitating what I see in the crow, even though the crow is not intending to look goth. He just looks like the crow. Right. Or like anything with Tim Burton, but I could be totally wrong about that. I'm sure the, the cure was in the eighties. I'm sure goth really started to be big in the eighties. I mean, I, I, I can't think of another movie that would have more kind of just like cracked through um, it's for young girls, for my, for millennials. This, this was your entry point. I would. Yeah. And what, what year was empire records? 95. Okay, so she just, so uh, Ro- Robin Tunney just hadn't grown all of her hair back yet? Yeah, she said she was she was still, she had like an inch of hair. Oh, okay. And when That's she got cast in this, and uh, they so she's wearing a wig, a uh, kind of bad wig. It's, the whole movie. And I, I never stopped thinking about the wig. I mean, the wig has bothered me since, uh, you know, since watching it as a kid. Because uh, if all the characters have a wig, then I understand, but she's the only one. So I just always wondered, like, what's going on under there? Yeah. Now I know. All right, let's get into the making of the movie Please. in our history segment. This starts with the producer Doug Wick and the screenwriter Peter Peter Filardi, Filardi who teamed up to develop this movie. Um, and I'm using two. There are two really good oral histories of the craft. I'll link both in the description. One is from HuffPost in 2016 by Matthew Jacobs and Julia Brucchieri, and um, the other one is from Entertainment Weekly in 2017. I don't remember the author, sorry. Um, but yeah, uh, Filardi had written the movie Flatliners. Doug Wick was becoming a big producer. He had produced Working Girl. He would go on to produce uh, Gladiator and lots of other big movies. But he um, they, they, they paired up to uh, to develop this idea of teen witch, teen girls who are witches, but like serious witches, inspired right. by real practices and beliefs. Um, and, and Velarde wrote the first draft of the screenplay. He did a, did a lot of research on paganism and on Wicca. Um, and here's a quote from Douglas Wick, the producer quote, I was sort of thinking about teenage girls and how suddenly they came into this enormous power of their sexuality and how to maybe make a movie about that. I was very aware of, I was very aware that witchcraft is an age old metaphor for talking about female empowerment and the sort of mysteries of women and their connection to nature in terms of reprodu- reproductivity. I started trying to figure out how to do a story that would be about very real teenage emotions expressed through witchcraft. In that heightened world, we could really explore the longings, the fears, and the wants of teenage girls just as they sort of come into their power, the power of their sexuality, their power in the world. I started talking to different writers about how to approach this, and I started and I talked to several people who were way too genre and didn't really understand. This seemed like a great petri dish for examining young women. Then Peter Filardi came in and he instantly had great ideas, end quote. So hmm. it seems like the idea was like, at least initially in the movie, it it doesn't seem it seems kind of like a normal high school movie. It's so funny how I don't I don't overanalyze the movies that are so baked in. I mean, yeah, now that I'm reading this, I'm like, oh right, okay, <laughs> that's there was a metaphor here. <laughs> um, I, I just t- take it at face value when it's so ingrained. Um, but yeah, you've got you've got racism, you've got the loss of a parent, you've got poverty, and you've got you know. Um, your appearance. Physical, yeah. Uh, yeah, physical deformity. Um, I always, obviously, very, uh, those things f- stood out. It's like, oh, no, okay, they need to be witches then because they've got these things going on. <laughs> you, you know what else I didn't give enough thought to? Once you find out that Sarah has a dead mom, everything else she talks about, she's like, oh, because their mom's dead. But then you're like, wait, no, you, she's been dead the whole time you've been alive. So that doesn't explain at all all your struggles with mental illness and why you attempted suicide and uh, why you have these visions and stuff. Are we to think that like her magic has been making her suicidal? I it, 
we can we can dive in a little yeah, more I later. I didn't think but... of that. I I, thought, I I was kind of trying to track the rules of how witching powers work because they say she inherited it from her mom, so it's like a genetic. It's a blood disease, basically, <laughs> uh, versus something you can just start believing in and practicing. I don't know. No, no, no. They're saying it's both because the other three girls are learned witches, not oh, a natural and, and witch. She's okay. She's, she's a natural. That's why she's such... Hermione Harry Potter. Filardi, the screenwriter, he says, quote, at the time I was immersed in the world of teen Satanism and that volatile cocktail of hallucinogens, metal and magic. I knew a lot about how magic worked and where it came from. What? Doug and I spoke for hours about mag magic, mushrooms and ecstasy. I remember him telling him that magic is historically a weapon of the underclass. It was originally practiced by people of the heath or heathens. Poor people without the power of a king, army, or church behind them. Our characters could not be popular, beautiful overlords of their school. For real magic to work, they would have to be outsiders with more than desires. Real magic requires need. Mm. Doug agreed. He had three young daughters at the time. He was a great collaborator and advocate for the project. End quote. Okay. So, I mean, that, okay. I love the, I love the history lesson segment there um, at the last of the, at the bottom of the quote, but the, I was immersed in the world of teen Satanism mm -hmm. and the volatile cocktail of hallucin hallucinogens, metal and magic. Yeah. He's, he's asserting that he knew a lot of teen Satanists and that magic's real. You, the, uh, uh, the chemical the effects of, of magic. <laughs> the chemical effects of fucking ecstasy are not magic. Magic mushrooms are called magic mushrooms because they make a chemical thing happen in your brain. Not because they fucking make you levitate. This guy's a, Crackpot. You think he believes in magic? Crackpot. I think he just found it interesting that people, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't look into the what this guy's about. dabbling in these things as identities, then that's fine. I was immersed in the world of teen Satanism. But I get. Are, were you 45 years old? <laughs> Why were you immersed in this, sir? I did wonder that myself. Why do you know so much about teen Satanism as opposed to Satanism in general? And he yeah. mentioned this. He's like the teen Satan scholar, somebody that I've meant to look into. But um, then it must have something to do with w that you're particularly open to this kind of thing as something that's going to be part of your personality when you're deciding what kind of person you are. And for people who are adults who still are Wiccan or would identify as witches or witchy um most likely got into it as a as this age person right mm -hmm. it, it does seem kind of hard to believe that somebody in their middle age would start doing stuff like this i read this as him being intellectually curious about all this stuff rather than being personally involved in it but you could be you're probably right i yeah i mean as an adult who reads Wikipedia about random stuff, I feel like, yeah, I, I'm really into learning about all this stuff, but all that means is I just read about it on Wikipedia. That might be what he means. He just, he says immersed. That makes me think his body's there, but I get the sense that this was supposed to be a much edgier movie, maybe hmm. more may, drug use. Okay. That, that, that's the big thing that, that seems like it's missing from this movie yeah. is drugs, but it is a, you know, a studio release. It's an R rated movie, but there's a death of a kid. Yeah. I always kind of forget that he dies when he falls out the window. Lots of talk about suicide. Yeah. Slitting wrists. And uh, and this movie single-handedly taught me how to slit your wrist the right way, quote unquote. Which is what? Along the vein so that you're opening the mo the majority of it rather than just going across it and opening a small part of it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but that would just mean you would have to be like surgically accurate with it too. So I think there's probably just as likely a, a chance of you missing the entire thing. This is a movie that seems like it would appeal to a Lacey as a kid looking for an identity versus people who already identified as goths or mm. are identified in, in a sort of counterculture way because mm -hmm. it seems a little too sanitized Got it. to Hollywood for the real thing. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I guess any kind of representation, even if it's not perfect, is still good, right? I mean, I think you see someone who's pretending to be poor in a movie, or is poor in a movie, I appreciate they're there. Gay in a movie, I appreciate they're there. I mean, I can't think of a ton of goth movies, and when they go mainstream, it does seem like it gives a little bit more credit to what you've already chosen to do, though... Because we were millennials, the word poser was prevalent as fuck in high school. So this would also give a big group of people it, the, the need to call someone a poser, um, which I'm sure I was called. And then I called other people posers, other people posers. Um, but you know, it was much more popular in my school rather than witches was vampires. People who literally 
identified and thought that they were really? vampiric. Mm-hmm. I've never met anyone. It, that's the most goth you can be, is okay. a vampire. A witch is like friendly goth. It's like cute. And you probably smoke a lot of weed, which I did not. This um, Actually, I kind of did. Okay. Well, which is it? I, a lot of weed for me, that's the most weed I ever smoked, would be like 14, 15, 16. So like daily? The um, script went to Andrew Fleming, who was hired to, to rewrite it. And then he said he spent so much time rewriting, he became attached to these characters and he applied to direct the movie. He had previously directed two movies, Bad Dreams and Threesome. And he would mm-hmm. go on to direct Dick, the uh, Michelle Williams, Kristen Dunst, Richard Nixon movie. Yeah. Do you ever see that? It's a fun movie. Is it? Yeah. That seems like, I'm surprised you didn't see it. I mean, I might have. I don't know. It didn't stick. It wasn't my movies. Um, The In-Laws and then the 2007 Nancy Drew adaptation. I didn't see any of this. Yeah. Uh, Threesome is possible. Lara Lara Flynn Boyle from Twin Peaks, Josh Charles, and Stephen Baldwin. And That uh, sounds really familiar. What if there was a threesome? Is that what it's about? Or is it just three people? No, I think it's like it's like they one of them is turn. gay. The straight woman is in love with the gay man oh, who's I've in love with it. the straight man. Really? Mm-hmm. Really? Rawr. Okay. And so they're like, hey, let's just all be, I don't know. See how that goes. Um, Andrew Fleming uh, said, quote, my experience from high school was not pretty in pink. It was a very serious, gothic, heavy duty experience. Everybody was under a lot of pressure. So I liked that part of it a lot. I brought it to I brought to it the idea that the main character had committed suicide and had tried to commit suicide. Uh, the idea that the Rochelle character was black and that she'd been experiencing racism, that was my idea. The <laughs> idea that Bonnie had been burned, that was my idea. Oh my there was God. a girl in my dorm room who tried to kill herself and I found her with her wrists cut. Oh, there was a girl in my dorm okay. who had burns like that and I was intrigued by her. What is this guy's fucking problem? <laughs> hey, you're pretty neat. Uh, there was a lot of weird bigotry in high school. I think I personalized it. I also liked the idea that it was witchcraft, but that it felt real. All the witches you'd seen in movies heretofore had been in black pointy hats with green skin. And weirdly, a few years before, somebody in the business, I guess I upset them. It was this woman. I don't want to go into details, but she said, I'm a pagan. I'm going to cast a spell on you and it's going to fuck you up. I was really freaked out. Is this quote. guy five years old? He sounds 13 at the most. A woman said my she idea. cursed me. And this was my idea. And here to four, they're green. <laughs> um, this is the director. This is the director, yeah. Directing they, things with adults in them. That's right. I'm glad he's not the writer. He did, he did or co-write the, it. Or the talker. Did they let him talk a lot? On set? He's not good at talking. No. Uh, they, they hired a, a, a practitioning, uh, a Wiccan uh, practitioner to be a consultant. I appreciate that. I mean, because you definitely, it feels, although I just feel like the whole thing that you do to be a witch is you go to Barnes & Noble a lot. Like you just, need, you need a lot of books. You're constantly buying a book. Mm. Those books have no overlapping content and you need candles. I don't know. So, so yeah, quote, the consultant on the set helped write the chants and incantations. Mm-hmm. Pat Devon, she's credited in the movie as a technical consultant, but she was really there to try to make it real. It felt real. She Lacey's, did a good job. Lacey's choke collar my fell choke off. Collar can't, it's not a choke now. collar, it's a choker, but all right. A choker, my bad. Well, I'm here to teach you. I'm your consultant. But she was really there to try to make it real. I wanted Wiccans to see it and say, yeah, that's not offensive to me. That's what it's like. The whole idea was to make up stuff because the God that they refer to in the movies is something that we made up because it might've been offensive to people. If we had used mm. real people's people's real gods, we created our own. That's actually End quote. a fair thing to have tried yeah, to I was go Googling, around. I was, I was looking up, uh, does Manon have a Wikipedia page? He does not, but it is, a, it's, so I guess it's like, we're using, we're, we're just inspired by real Wicca to, to, to come up with something that's, that's like an analog to it. So that yeah. real Wiccans would be like, Okay, yeah, I can. This represents that, or this represents that. It's not. It's not a um, a spoof of what I believe. It's a right. We're not making fun of it. We're going adjacent out of respect. I guess it would be kind of odd to see a um, an adjacent version of Christianity. You know, I, dear F- Famous, I love just everything except for you replace God with some other word. I, I guess I could see that as like That'd disrespectful. Be cool. Okay. No, somebody should do that. All right. uh, or it's like when we did our child's play episode and we're like, this movie has voodoo being real in it. And like voodoo is an actual religion people practice. Right. What do they think about voodoo? Hey, your religion causes Chuckies. That's what your religion does. And for uh, Bernie to dance on his own and he's dead. So Bernie. we can have Bernie's too. Oh. We haven't watched that yet, but we should. 
And he had this idea. Last time, I remember a complaint I had about this movie on our first episode that I felt like every scene film felt like it was disconnected from all the other scenes in terms of how it looked and felt like it was like almost like a location scout hadn't done their job properly. Hmm. Like, it's kind of hard to explain. It's like you can see a movie and feel like none of this seems like it's part of the same world. Okay. That was my complaint last time. Whereas this time I thought I really liked the the the, the visual uh, palette of the movie and the locations. And he said he was inspired to really emphasize older L.A., older architecture. Like he said, it was, uh, the, quote, the kind that was built in the 40s and that's kind of decayed. It's unique as a big city in that there's nature everywhere. The whole premise was that hmm. there should always be trees or there should be skies or water or wind or fire, the four elements. Yeah. So we were always putting in greens or adding animals or wind or candles. The magic comes from the earth. Yeah, it did. And, it doesn't feel, they say it's L.A. and it never feels like L.A. Except for like my teenage brain would have been like, yeah, when that homeless guy's there. But <laughs> it does seem, it always does seem odd that that, that, the man with the snake is in the very beginning of the movie but they clearly live like up in hills or something like mm -hmm. it was hard for them to go up their own driveway but that guy's just like i got a snake he's just up there yeah he's just up there but yes it's a it's a different look at la the hills LA. have guys yeah with snakes <laughs> um a different look at la i mean like hollywood the real hollywood neighborhood's pretty shitty uh, all of la is kind of shit but that's just the parts i've seen i mean it's just a huge, big city. Yeah, with and lots LA, of different look, di different things, different architectural styles. It's not LA's fault that B LA, LA, LA. Every time it's mentioned, it's someone rich saying it. It's always in a context of glamour and and Hollywood. So it's the, not really fair to LA when you get there and you're like, oh, you're just like a city. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we do here. So yeah, casting. They need to cast their four witches, and they said this was difficult. Like Vic, uh, Fleming, Andy Fleming said, uh, there's like an ecosystem now of teenage actors, but there wasn't really at the time. There was mm. Winona Ryder and Claire Danes, and that was it. And uh, he said, like, it took him a long time to find the four. It took him almost a year to find the four girls. Uh, the first one they cast was Rachel True as Rochelle. And she said, quote, at that point, the character Rochelle was Caucasian and bulimic. Luckily, they switched that up. I think that having the racial component in that movie added a really great layer so that it wasn't just that just wasn't there in most teen movies. Right. A lot of times the roles I played, I literally say the words, are you okay? So this time I got to play a character who actually had something going on. Mm. And then she also said in the original script, before they decided to go with someone non-white, my character was bulimic. And then once they cut that out, I was like, my issue is that I'm black. No, my issue is not that I'm black. The world's issue is that I'm black. Yes. End quote. Uh, they cast Feruza Bulk, who I'm sure they just looked at and like, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you already cast a spell on this casting call. So, yeah. She was a, a, practic a practicing pagan. And, uh, you know, she got her start. What had she been in? Returned to Oz as a child in uh, the 80s, in the uh -huh. mid-80s. Yep. And she has like bit parts and stuff. And then after this has a little run. Yeah, a little, it's small. She, Tim Burton just, you think he'd scoop her up, but no. It's a little too on the nose. I think, yeah. And I, think I, think, he'd, I think he'd be scared of her. I was going to say yeah. she's a dom. Yeah, I think she's scary. Yeah. It's perfect. <laughs> no. No, I need to make you. You're not You're not theater enough. <laughs> yeah, he needs to make, make you in his little pot of clay or whatever. Yeah. So I'm going to turn my wife into something almost identical. <laughs> um, Robin Tunney was originally up to play Bonnie. They have Campbell role, but yeah, the they filmmakers seem, wanted her to play the lead. They seem interchangeable. It probably because of the su success of Empire Records, huh? I mean, because when did Scream come out L after this? Uh, it might have been. It was. It came out the same year. I don't remember which was produced first. I think it was the right move because Nev, Nev would have cannibalized herself. Nev it, was the biggest at name actor because of Party of Five. Sure. In this movie, but I would say that's probably my biggest complaint is I think Robin Tunney's as the lead just is kind of out of her depth. And if Nev Campbell had that role, we just saw her carry scream. True. Uh, yeah. I think this movie would be a lot better. I th she's just the least interesting of the, of the characters. And, and yeah, that's the nature of the character is I'm the, the normal nice one. But you're right. She's, she is kind of like blah. It, it, that, that's why she works so well on empire records because she's supposed to be like d over it. And well, she's also just committed uh, attempted suicide in that show, movie. Um, She's got bandages on her wrists, in fact. Uh, hmm. And it works because she's like the the one who thinks everyone else is lame. So like that that whole thing just works perfect. Where here she's not very engaging and not very mysterious new girl, just kind of like it, it Bella Swan. It's all I can think of. I mean, 
I don't want to be such so. a basic bitch, but yes, I kept thinking this is just Kristen Stewart. I kept yeah. looking at her and thinking she was Kristen Stewart or she was Juliette Lewis. That's the other one I kept thinking she was. Mm-hmm. And those are two great actresses and I don't, Robin Tunney, God bless you. I'm sure you're a nice person. And um, you've been lots of, I don't know, what else have I even seen her? Vertical Limit? I, I still love her though, because I can't imagine this movie without her in it. And I, I love all the things I hate about her. All the little, <laughs> just weird, I've got to make a whole, I'm going to make a no, whole get, little clip of I this. Totally, I totally, totally get that. It's like, yeah, but that makes the movie magical that she's so weird looking when she runs. And her, and her I like that like low cadence to her voice. You, know, you just don't get a lot of deep voiced people. I mean, it's when she uses it for evil and uses does a vocal fry three times in a row. I I then get upset, but I just like that she's kind of just like hefty like this. Yeah, movie they produced it for fifteen million dollars, and it looks really good except for the CGI. And it was a sleeper hit, fifty five million dollars worldwide. I'm sure it made a bonanza. Sleep, sleeper hit meaning like it was slow and then picked up, or like it waited. VHS made it. Pop like what? No, as in like it opened number one at the box office with six million dollars. So it's like, mm. oh, cool, you opened number one. Six million dollars is not a lot of money, but it's like you maybe played for a long time. Like mm. each weekend, it just kept making a couple million dollars, and in the end, you're like, oh, okay. This Slup- movie made it back snuck up on me three times its budget. Wow! And then you know it plays forever on cable and home video and stuff. 2020 October of 2020, uh, a legacy sequel. I had no idea. October of 2020, when a movie gets released into theaters, that is truly a dump. That's yeah. Oh well, and 2020 specifically. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so, yeah. so, oh, okay. This was a theater release. Yes, oh, this look, but this, this was clearly net, Netflix written all over it. Well, clearly, it's this was the studio saying like, "There's no hope for this movie. We're not going to save it for a year from now, or when or when theaters are back." They even have the one black girl, three white girls, and one girl with short hair. What the fuck were they doing? Well, it's the craft legacy. What does legacy that mean? Well, you got to keep up the legacy. Got to everyone is a type, and we got to recreate the types. The four types. That's white, what it means to be black. a legacy. No, it's not literally what it means. Short hair, long hair. Well, I got to say, the long haired one in the middle looks like the meanie, and then short hair, nicey. Well, it's not keeping the types. Feruza Balk makes a cameo. I don't know if she's playing Nancy, but. The only other thing I really know her from is Waterboy. Oh, and American History X. I'm trying to think. She had a little run, but the range is the the, the only time she's very different from it, and still not that different is Waterboy. <laughs> Just she's nice. She's mean and everything else. But say she's like Feruza Balk. Like Feruza Balk. you, you just say oh. you say you say her name, and it's like she's how many how many people. An R A blank type. You are a, a your name type. Yeah. I want a Feruza Balk type. Right. Let's see. Uh, the Island yeah. of Doctor Mor- Moreau. Al- almost famous. The Water Boy. American History X. Deuce is wild. Don't come not. What are these movies? Almost famous. I don't remember or not. Wild tigers. I have known. <laughs> All right then. So I mean, it's mostly from I, this movie. Yeah, I mean, she just and, made a huge, a huge impression. She definitely did on me. And, and people are going to be mad at everything we're saying. Like, what about the maker? Gas food light, imaginary crimes, toll booth. Thanks. It is funny that she got her start playing Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. And she's very good in that movie as a, you know, 12 year old or whatever. I can imagine her facial features would be magical at, on a young, on a little, like kind of like Elizabeth Taylor, how she was like a magical mm-hmm. little actor. There's such grown up features and then they, they keep growing. She's, yep, yeah, she's iconic. So and her name, where, where is she from? Like, what do you know where that name comes from? Heritage. Hmm. Means turquoise. A variant of the Persian names Feruza Persian. and Feruz, both meaning turquoise. Okay. Has Arabic roots, variant of Persian, popularized in the U.S. by actress and musician Feruza Ball. Musician, hey. Hey, yes, she is also a musician. So that is the uh, hmm. history of the craft. And now we're going to talk about the movie and complain about the way Robin Tunney runs. Robin Runny. My no. I'm your daughter now. Oh, 
Okay, The Craft. The Craft opens before even the opening credits. We get a look at three of the four crafties uh, at Nancy and Bonnie and Rochelle. And they're chanting or whatever. They're doing their witch stuff. Yeah. And, you know, we always comment on how much time it must take them to set up anybody really to set up all the candles and cups and stuff. Speaking from experience, since we did a adorable Ouija board video and I there were there were six candles involved. Yeah, it took like two hours of setup. You cursed a lot. Not well, cursing just, like the witches, but no, it's just that it's it, there's only so much candle. So you gotta you gotta time the candles. You can't you can't get ready too early and you can't get, stay stay going too late. Yeah. Those candles burn out. On the old episode we did about the craft, we had our theory that the appeal of this movie, and I stand by it, the appeal of this movie is you get a group of your friends together and you're all on the same page about right. the game you want to play. Right. Because when you're a kid, you know, three of three of the four of you want to play Star Wars, but then a fourth one at a certain point's like, no, I'm playing Power Rangers. But even more important, you're all deciding to go in hard. This is going to be full LARP and no one gets to break the fourth wall and make us, the rest of us feel stupid. Right. We're all promising to be really into this. Right. Nobody at, at any point in this movie is like, guys, this is, I mean, come on. Well, it, it's kind of in their favor that uh, magic is real in this well, world. Well, that's true. But here's what I wanted <laughs> to ask cheating. you. At what point, like we see them right here at the beginning of the movie. Is magic working for them? Do they have powers yet? Right. I I asked that a little bit earlier too. Like I, they don't, on this watch of the movie, it's the first time I realized how many unanswered questions there are. And I've never felt the need. I never felt any gaps in the story before, but that's one of them. Like they are so in on this idea. You've got to think they've had it moments. Uh, they've had something. And, and obviously Bonnie seems connected because she knew well, because she was reading the almanac, <laughs> she knew that they were they were going to be getting their fourth the day that they got her. The almanac says that today is the spring of new birth and reward. Oh. Yeah, she she knows all this stuff. She sees she doesn't know Sarah. It. Uh, well, she reads it in her almanac. She sees Sarah like balancing a pin, and she's like, "Wow, that girl has magic powers." She put a pencil on its point and turned it. I'm not saying it's not impressive. I'm saying it's magic. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. It's a, at what point do they understand that they have magical powers? Is this a LARP versus this is real? I don't know. Guess it doesn't matter. Well, and it it's my guess as to why there's so much chanting involved with re any religion, and we see in this movie over and over again that the key seems to be saying something over and over and over again, and if it rhymes, then it's definitely going to work. But it's like. You put yourself into a hypnotic state and you're looking for signs. So there's no coincidences. And if you want to believe in something, you can see it everywhere. I, yeah, just like believing in God, you see God everywhere if, if that's what you believe in. Okay. So they're, yeah. Okay. They're, they're, they're seeing, it's like kind of working if you believe it is. You just need to believe. Uh, there's a horrendous cover of Tomorrow Never Knows by Our Lady Peace over the opening credits. And then we you. meet. I love that cover. Uh, Bella Swan, and she is not Bella Swan. <laughs> I wrote in my notes, like Bella Swan. She's pouty and sad about moving to the stupid new town of Los Angeles. Uh, but yeah, the Robin Tunney as Sarah is, is, is in the, I mean, Bella Swan is also riffing on this, uh, you know, sad girl moves to new location, is an outcast, is a misfit, falls in with other misfits. It is a dick move to move your kid in high school. Once they're in high school, they're already baking. You just need to let them stay there and cook. Usually there's some reason given, like my dad just got remarried or his job. It's just my uh, dad wanted to. Is we what, we the wanted to move. Gets. Wanted to move. Yeah. Move me my senior year. Uh, you can. You kind of get the wave of like, OK, she did have a suicide attempt. It's easy to blame it on the location when you're not really sure what to do. So maybe a change is good. Maybe they need to get out of the house where it happened. I think they're that's all, that's I think you probably nailed it. That is exactly what happened. Uh, they move into this incredible mansion. And they're like, what a hunk of junk this place is. Guess we need a new roof. Uh, a gold this, roof is what is this Spanish style architecture? What what sure. architecture is this? That, all right. That sounds right. And then a scary snake guy comes to the door and the dad's like, hey, get out of here. You get out of here. I still Did he spook you? totally don't. I mean, other than just to give us the heebie jeebies or to let us know this movie's going to going to have some turns. I do not know what foreshadowing really he like 
the thing he says, if I had a dream about you and you die, like he's not right. In fact, he dies. So yeah. Is he, but is he connected to these witches? Is he, is he, is he in tune to the powers of Manon? What's also, the deal with this guy? He has a copy of the farmer's almanac. It's like in, in Friday, the thir- in the first Friday of the 13th, there's a sequence. There's just where there's just a snake in somebody's cabin. You're like, Oh my God, a, s- a, s- a snake. And it just makes you feel like evil is present, even though we're in the woods and a snake is. Yeah. It's a common foreshadowing thing to do is just to have something scare you. You just, you, they don't, the movie doesn't allow you too much peace or a book or anything. It's just like even a car backfiring or something. It's something just needs to happen. Yeah. Well, she gets dropped off at school and her dad's like, Hey, you could, you don't have to go to school. You could at least wait until you get a uniform. And she's, and this is the most upsetting thing to me in the movie is going into a school that wears uniforms without your uniform. And, uh, do, but do they have a uniform at this school? This is the most lax fucking is policy very, on uniforms. Is, yes, it is very lax. In fact, she wears the exact proper uniform, which the racist white popular girl wears, I will point out, and immediately gets made fun of for wearing it the right way. Cool jacket. I know this okay. extremely attractive young woman walks into school and people are like looking at her askew like what the f- this fucking freak. She's wearing the school's jacket. Doesn't even know we wear uh, graphic tees and suspenders. Not part of the uniform. Which tops schoolgirl bottoms? The dad's like, yeah, you can wait until you get a uniform at least. And she's like, I can't stay at home and watch daytime TV for the rest of my life. See, that's perfect impression. Also, the key that she's probably been depressed and has had a lot of at home time lately. This is this is her chance to start over and get her energy back her zest for life back yeah but i'll send you to catholic school that's zesty as hell it is and just a reminder that like you know whenever people freak out about what the kids are going to get indoctrinated with it doesn't fucking matter you'll have witches at catholic school you'll have satanists at catholic school i'd say you'd have extra yeah you'd have yeah how what a better way to rebel give me rules i go against A school curriculum is just the shit you ignore. In the state we live in, Louisiana, they're violating the Constitution and and mandating that every public school classroom displays the Ten Commandments. What? And maybe as a younger person, I'd have gotten upset about it. But now I'm like, you know, you know what's going to guarantee the Ten Commandments aren't cool is having them them up. Yeah. Putting them up in a school classroom. That's why I litter all the time and I do drugs. Yeah. Yeah, That's that's why I don't give a hoot. Because like Ace of Base, I saw the sign. So, um... Yeah, we, we, we now get to spend some more time with the witches. Uh, Feruza Balk as Nancy. She has a noose in her locker. Which is so... It's the most over the time. It's just a little bit too much in that moment. It's like, okay, we get it. She's fucking edgy. How else would you know that she's fucking edgy? What, it, what gives you the idea? You know how I know even more? She leaves it open. You're not a popular kid at school. You leave your locker open she takes the noose out and then slams the door on it and it's just open because the noose is out and walks away from her locker she's a maniac this is the kind of thing that gets the cops called on you or you have to get taken out of class to go talk to the cops in the lab talk with the cops <laughs> young in the lady why did you leave your locker open with a noose in it that I, we can all not see the point the point is you can't be a not popular kid at school and risk leaving your locker ajar oh okay the kinds of turds that will end up in there Use tampons. I don't mean that 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 happened to me. You know, lockers, lockers are a thing that I was poisoned by media to, to think would play a much more prominent role in my life. And then when I got to schools with lockers, it's like 20% of kids use lockers. And it was for me, it was preparation uh, for having a car. The amount of shit and food that you leave in that locker Mm. is probably a good indicator of, the way your car is going to look one month after owning it. And for me, old bread. So yeah. yeah. You had a messy locker. Eh? Had a messy lo- It was just one more place for me to be depressed that I'm not good at keeping up with things. Well, you know, it was like, you got to save your back. You don't want to bring all those textbooks home with you. But it's like, but all my classes give me homework. Every so I have to bring one. them home. Right. And the idea was like, just bring the ones you need to the classes. Then don't make the school campus so big. The campus was huge tons of flights of stairs if i want to go to my locker i don't get to go to my class so kind of null and void at that point so like sarah's in her french class uh, breck and meyer's there skeet ulrich is there all the best and all these characters we've met over the past month of our show yeah breck and meyer and skeet ulrich and 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 sarah robin tunney is making her pencil 
do the thing where it's standing up on our point on its point and, and spinning and and uh nev campbell as bonnie is like looking over and she's like wow well I, yes because magic right it's a it's it's a pencil which means magnets can't be involved matt you're losing the reason why the pencil matters very convenient that they have all the same classes together because the moment bonnie realizes i told you she is the fourth she is immediately in biology with all the other witches where she can and and the new girl they're all in the same classes uh so she can be like i told you she is a witch skeet Ulrich is chris and he goes and sits with sarah at lunch and he gives sort of a david crumholtz and 10 things i hate about you tour of the school like see those girls over there they're bitches in fact they're witches. End of tour. That's the, tour. <laughs> That's the whole tour. That's the only thing you need to know about Here. the schools. We have witches. Stay away from them. They're witches. You you have to have this in every uh, like vampire movie or uh, right. or witch movie. You have to get the the warning. Stay away from them. Bella, stay away from them. The Cullens, they're weird. They're vampires. We're normal. We're werewolves. And uh, Lost Boys, you're right. That also happens. Corey Feldman's like vampires. And hey, here's what I'm going to do for you. You can come watch me practice football. So she does as a cover of the Smiths. How soon is now is playing and how soon is now was the theme song to the TV show charmed, Mm. which Robin Tunney in one of the oral history said. So it's clear that was just a rip off of our movie and it it was on for so long and so popular that people assume I was in charmed. Oh, wow. Because they're mixing up these two things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another so many sitcoms. I don't know why that happened, but they are, I mean, I immediately felt like, nope, those aren't my shows. I, I, I can't even name the ones I did watch. Every episode, I feel like you bring up a new, a new 90s sitcom that was super popular with everybody but me. And I, no Dawson's Creek, no Gilmore Girls, no Charm, These aren't no sitcoms, Buffy. though. These are, and I'm, I'm just saying it because we've been getting a lot of corrections. These aren't sitcoms, though. These are dramas. Sorry. I just have, I use that word to s- just... Uh, Network TV. Yeah. <laughs> Network TV serial show. Somebody corrected our Dirty Dancing episode. It's like, there's two sisters, not three. Like, if we said three, I'm we sorry, but we three. said two sisters 25 times in the episode. My God. <sighs> Never be a public figure, listeners. It's hell. Man, is it hard. And I don't interrupt person who commented on video that we uploaded this week. She makes friends the first day, even out out of her fucking uniform, um, because she's she's a witch and doesn't want to watch that guy play football. She's trying to figure it out. What's co- what's cool? Going to hang out with these bitches, hanging out with that dick. I don't know. Let's go shopping. They invite um, her shop. They invite you her. Go get coffee. They don't really like give her a choice, and they go to the witch Barnes and Noble, and. They they show her that, oh, they steal things. And then they ask her to steal a book. And she says she doesn't do that. And then she buys the book. And that's where she meets the nice witch and learns that people can tell by looking at her that she's a witch and is a natural witch. She never mentioned being a witch at all to this woman. She's like, oh, I guess you're a natural witch. Did you see her wiggle her nose? Did you see her make anything fly no you didn't well it's like star wars the star wars prequels you just pick up on this essence you know i can feel the midichlorians coming out of you young lady uh if you have a witch store how many of how many people who come in do you think are just going in for a goof versus actual paying customers that's a it i mean it has to be most of your foot traffic yeah yeah um i mean it's la i don't it's not like it's salem or there's tons of witch i don't know trying to think of a I, are there witch stores in or there's got to be there's a witch store in covington louisiana what's it called i don't know the witch witch store i don't know okay, witches it. brew all right it's a little on the nose now she's seeing it's well it's nighttime this is a new place and there's a lot of uh unhoused people and she notices the man that had the snake and was in her house um he's still got the snake that's nice he's a good pet owner um and this is when he starts saying, I had a dream about you. And he's following her and it freaks out all of the witches. Um, and they all cross the street. Sarah's the last one to cross the street. He follows her into it. And apparently they all think at the at the same time, he's going to get hit by a car or I want him to get hit by a car. And they, then they cause the man's death. And then they run into the hobo woods and they sit on disgusting sofas and... Uh, Get real excited about how the fact like, oh, that they're... That, that we, happened. We did it. We, uh, just, are you able to do stuff like that? You think things and then they happen? And um, she's like... 
A yes. man's dead. <laughs> no. It's dead. That's but I wished for it, I wished it for him to be dead. He was, and then that's where Nancy starts her, you know, making it all seem like it's okay. She's like, he was after you. He was going to get you, saw. <laughs> And uh, yeah, are you able to do stuff like that? And she's like, yeah, I mean, sometimes I wish for things to happen and then they happen, but like kind of weird. Like sometimes I wish for it to rain and a pipe will burst in my room and it would get blah, blah. And then sometimes I'll just wish that's quiet and then I'll go deaf for like three days. Three. Day. Okay, this is gonna be so fun to listen. But back this to. is this is this is where it's on overdrive. This particular scene out in the woods, and then Feruza Balk starts explaining about Menel. And every time they say <sighs> Menel, it's like it's. I feel like you're dropping the end of a syllable right there. Menel. I, like, what is that choice? This it 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 takes me out of the movie. But it's such a part of the movie that like I forgive it. I'm feel, like, again, all the things that annoy me are just make it more of why I feel so attached to it because all of the beats are so familiar you have to have the bad too no i don't want i don't want manon to not be in this movie that's the only thing i will i will remember about this <laughs> okay. movie is the word manon i'm glad you enjoy it, it. makes it special oh. if, if it were gog magog or something not as special i don't gog magog well uh, she, <laughs> she, special. she's like uh manon what are you even talking about is, is, do you guys worship the devil she's like no manon is like if God and this devil were playing in football match, <laughs> Manon would be the stadium. And the sun that shone upon them. I read that in a book. The, okay. The farmers are almanac. But at a, at a certain point, something they say is too far for Sarah. And she's like, I'm out of here. And she leaves. You guys are being weird. Yeah. Well, she, she <laughs> she's, it seems like, and maybe this is what drove her to try to commit suicide. Her powers have been a nuisance and been a presence. And she thinks she's weird because of them. And these girls are talking about like leaning in and like really, really uh, deciding the things she sees and feels and thinks are real, where she's probably had doctors her whole life telling her to suppress them. That's not happening. You need to take this medicine. You know, that that's my read of it is just like, no, my string says to not practice magic. Well, we should probably have gotten one scene before she even met the witch's where she displays a power and it seems like a burden to her. Maybe her dad's like, yes, seems freaked out or creeped out about it. Yes. And it's like this thing that has been a burden to her. She's now attracted to these girls who make her realize, no, 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 it's what's what makes exactly. you great. Exactly. Like, I mean, yeah, don't give us the information that her mom is dead and then tell us about the suicide attempt and that, then we just fill in the wrong blank, but maybe it's all part of a potpourri uh, that makes Sarah angsty. All right, so God, she did. She's having a long day, or unless no, because she's wearing a uniform now, huh? Is yeah, that a I uniform? Think, I think okay, so, so they later. don't do a great job of letting you know this is now a different day. But now she's on a, a popular teen roof um, with 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 the guy that they that the witches warned her is is a jerk. He he is a liar. He will fuck you over. He tries to bang everyone, and uh, so they have just. So much chemistry up here. Just the wittiest back and forth about head size you ever did hear. Um, he's complaining about her, the the witch girls and he's like, their heads are so big. It's like, huh, you have a lot of opinions about heads. And he's like, yeah, you should have a good size head. Lum, I'll kiss you. Yeah. Yum, yum. Eat them up. And then uh, so they kiss and then he's like, come on, babe, let's go back to my house. And she's like, um, no thank you for sex on this first rooftop evening um, but very 90s of her very relatable she's like is that okay are you mad are you mad yeah are you mad that's even better and he's, like, he's no. such a fucking asshole he's just like no yeah, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. yeah it, because it does seem it's, abrupt what he does next but you do realize this is just the kind of fucked up piece of shit he is which he'll tell you in the moment like no it's totally cool and then the next day he'll tell the whole school she's a dirty sl not only that we fucked but she was bad at having sex with the me. worst lay this was so mystifying to me when i was younger I, I i knew that there was an active role for women to to take in the bedroom but that they could be bad at it this movie taught me that was possible and i'm like but they they lay there. I don't think to a teenage boy they can be. What, <laughs> like, exactly what, what right. could she like, possibly have what done? What kind of adventurous Rose McGowan fucking kink shit have you been doing in the bedroom and it's her first time and she'd lay there? You're a lousy lay. Get the blood off my sheets now. Lousy. It was lousy. 
what experience do you have, sir? I, he hasn't lived long enough. And I am adamant you need a two year relationship for anyone to get good at sex because you need to be with them long enough to like two experiment. years. Wow. You know, you said something similar. No, I didn't. Don't say that. To be so good at something that you can be confident you've got you bring in the skills with you at this child. I think not. He doesn't know what he's talking about. This is a point I've made. Yes. I, I think that I think that here we're gonna get real for you. We're adults. If you want to be good at having sex, unfortunately, you probably do have to have a long term relationship with somebody. But one where like you actually have a good relationship. I think it's just trust. So if it takes a long time to build trust, that's what makes the sex better and better and more uh, elaborate. I don't know. Yeah, so this this movie we're complaining about the plot hole of he wouldn't even know what good sex was if it whacked him in the mouth. This teenage child does not know what a lousy lay is yet. That yep. All lays are good lays. She goes up At to him at this point. Well well Feruza Balk tells her that the school is all is a buzz with the rumors that you're a lousy lay. And she goes and confronts Chris and she's like, Hey, can you uh can we why'd talk? you can we talk? And he's like, Hey, listen, leave me alone. Stop begging. It's pathetic. It's so villain it is i'd rather he just kill my mom and then kill me later <laughs> like he does in the scream movies yeah. uh and then she's like hey chris fuck you right oh god oh i just feel so bad for her in that moment and i hate her um hey hey chris and i'm like don't don't say it you're not going to say something cooler this time sarah fuck you get it, sarah god damn it you what? are a lousy lay what yeah. a stupid comeback well what should she say give me one thing just walk away just walk there's away. nothing good there's nothing good i or hey chris your dick is small that's <gasps> what you do yes and that it smells oh my god you a know smelly dick you hear so much about small dick you don't hear so much about smell dick yeah we see the other uh we see the we, we spend some time with the other girls with nev campbell with uh rachel true uh we learn they're experiencing problems of their own uh rochelle uh the, the black woman is uh on her very white swim team and they are just uh, 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 admitted racist toward her. They're like, we hate you because you're a black person. We hate that about you. And your hair is like a pubes. That's gross. And she's like, leave me alone. It is just the one girl. But boy, does that other girl laugh at it. And in, in that she's just so on. Just, phew, yeah, it's so the movie really does just give you three dominoes and knocks them all down. Real, we're clean and easy. What's the deal with Rochelle? She's black. black. What's the deal with Bonnie? Scars, Scars and a huge pussy. Because the doctor is saying, okay, this shouldn't hurt. This, you might feel a pinch. You might feel a sting. And she's and she, <laughs> really just, uh, uh, okay. Okay, so in light, okay, of, in light of what we were talking about earlier, when you say huge pussy, I'm like, wait a minute. Did I miss something about her, her anatomy? Oh, she's oh, a coward. Coward. Because, yeah, she has lots of scars on her back. And when the doctor's like pokes her real gently, she's like, oh. No, okay. no, no, no. To be fair, it does look like it looks like on the level of getting a tattoo. So that's no fun. Yeah, fucking and witch or not. And she's probably the scar tissue of burns are, are really freaking uh, sensitive. So I take it back. Do they explain how she got these scars? No, and it never bothered me until this time. Well, it doesn't have to bother you. Just, just let it go. All right, I'll let it go. Uh, just, just did I miss something about she got burned by a, a warlock or something? No. Okay. Oh right, a spell turned wrong. Cauldron, a cauldron spell. A cauldron, yeah, yeah but an uh, empty cauldron. Yeah, and then Nancy goes home to her trailer, and her mom is yelling at her shitty stepdad, like you've got to pay the bill, you son of a bitch. Well, her mom's drunk. The trailer is leaking, and he is nasty. Ah. Uh, you can just tell he's he's going to be no good. Um, yeah, so now, so wh white trash burns black. That's those are the attributes. Those are the people. Um, next day, well, you know, who knows? I think it's pretty good. I mean, it's it's good storytelling. It's good. Um, it's good plotting that she's initially hesitant about this about all this witchery but then in seeing uh the powerlessness she has in the social hierarchy of the school which mm -hmm. is she can uh respectfully uh turn down skeet ulrich and say like but dude we'll have sex in like a week or right, something give me don't two worry more about dates. it yeah. yeah uh but no that totally turns uh that, that totally turns against her so it's like i i might as well go and embrace my witch powers because then like what the the screenwriter was saying uh, in the history segment, like uh, magic is 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 a way to um, 
is a way for the underclass, the oppressed yeah. to sort of uh, appropriate some power and some control. So she goes and follows them. They go on a field trip where they have the, we are the weirdos, Mr. Mm. Line. That is uh, iconic. I have found yep. in my res- in my research. Indeed it is. And they just go into some nice woods and start doing chants and stuff. And it's better that you should rush upon this blade than enter the circle with fear in your heart. How do you enter with perfect love and perfect trust? And they do it over and over and over again. And I've always been very um, mystified by the fact that Nev Campbell and Rochelle, they kiss on the lips, everybody else on the cheek. Yeah. Well, what happened there? Was it, like, it's like, no, nah, that's a good take. That's okay. <laughs> you guys didn't know you weren't, you didn't need to kiss on the lips, but it was so flawless. Otherwise, we'll just go with it. Uh, it, just, it seems like it should mean something, but whatever. I think it means, hmm. I don't know. I thought it was sweet. And then I was like, oh, they're all going to kiss on the lips. And I then thought they don't. So too, and then they don't. They don't. <sighs> um, and because they, oh, the, this is the ceremony that, that make, I, it always bugged me that um, you need four people for a circle. It's like, mm, that's a square, <laughs> but whatever. Um, so, well, this, there's this thing like we need a fourth. We need a fourth because the corners. north, east, west, south, and also earth, wind, air, fire. Also, um, the four quarters of a basketball game. Also, um, George Washington four on square. a four on a quarter. Uh, and connect four. Yeah. Um, but I guess it's the smallest amount of number you could need to make a circle out of something, and they are a circle, which is circle. So this is how they 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 put all their blood into a fucking cup and drink it and then butterflies and then ask happen for stuff well they ask for stuff robin mm-hmm. tunney wants to wants chris to love her which is this this doesn't track for me at all i know it is a weird it, it does feel like there are scenes missing from this movie um it seems like so, layup make him you, you want revenge on him right not for him to care about you right which is like and I like what happens with Skeet Ulrich. I like that he gets cursed to to love her, but it is it just doesn't track with her character that she what she wants more than anything is for him to love her. Uh, but you know the others. I want my scars to be gone. I want the racist piece of shit on my team to Paid. get fucked. And and Nancy for his bulk is like I want to be all powerful. And I want all have the all powers the, of Mano. <laughs> I want to be God. Please please be God. I'll okay. have some God now. Thank you. And then they all like, you know, put their hands in Power Rangers and then butterflies start flying around. <laughs> and then they turn into avatars. Yeah. <laughs> it's Mana. I can feel them all over what me. What is the name of the, you know, the whenever the, the white spider things come out of the trees, the the beautiful shit that happens in um, Awe or whatever in, in Avatar. Awa. Awa. It's Awa. It's yeah, it's Awa. Those are Awa bugs. Awa's all over me. Awa's and me, you guys. It's a double rainbow I'm of a Awa. Tray. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Okay. And now starts a series of adorable sleepovers. That is my favorite part of this movie is that there are like not one, not two, not three, but four. There's a lot of a lot of sleepovers, and they all serve a purpose. And it's it is very well observed. Girl social time or people of this age, this is when you get to do. This is the witching hour, if you will, Um, because otherwise you have to go on field trips, right? So skip school, which is how they go to the woods, or you have to do stuff after school out well then you run into scary homeless people so it's like it's it is a very common thing for teenage girls to do just a lot of shit in their rooms so it's nice that they all live in mansions and it's it's really sweet of nancy to stop being white trash and get a mansion apartment so that we have another place for a cool sleepover um at their slumber party uh sarah's like you guys ever played the game lies of feathers stuff as a ball you gotta try and when she said this you lacy to me said everyone's played that game and I wrote down the, uh, in my notes, not I, I've never played this game. A, it's not something guys tend to do at a sleepover. You guys probably like jerk off in a circle or make prank calls or something. We would. You uh, don't know. I had sleepovers. <laughs> with your cousins. No. I'm kidding. I'm just friends with my cousins. Uh, <laughs> I'm projecting. <laughs> no, we'd like, if you get a boner under your blanket, you like make it wiggle and show your friends. What? Yeah, I, that's what I wrote down. That's the, the kind of stuff. Game? That's the kind of stuff we do at our slumber parties. And then, like, your friend would throw a screwdriver at it. It sounds real. It's cool. real normal. It's real regular. How did you make your boner happen? No, let's not talk about children's boners. Why is this a female thing and not a not a all thing? Light as a feather. Sip because a it is to see if you can like contact 
the dead or like you have some kind of powers. Maybe it's because girls feel not powerful more so than guys. So it doesn't, or at least our specific kinds of weaknesses, we would need something otherworldly to enhance our security and, and status and stuff at this time. So it's like, we try to contact the dead, tell it, tell stories about how we're haunted um, or do Bloody Mary in the bathroom or don't think that's a period game. Do you think it's a period game? Do you know what Bloody Mary is? It's where you say Bloody Mary three times into the mirror. Okay, good. Just didn't want you to think it was some mystical girl period thing. Um, or you do lies, feather, stiff, support. You just all these little, you try to, you try to creep, you creep yourselves out and just have an experience. So explain lies, feather, stiff as a board to me. So you all get around the person. It doesn't matter how many of you there are. And you are only allowed to use two fingers on each hand. You slide them under the person, you space out, and you just chant, lies, feather, stiff as a board, lies, feather, stiff as a board. And then you just all, at the same time, try to lift the person. The idea being that it doesn't matter how many of you are, two fingers per person should not be able to lift another person. But you're you're asking the Lord or Manon to make that person light as a feather and stiff as a board so that you can raise them up. And it never, ever works. Oh, <laughs> That's oh, it. well, that's boring. I fucking love it. Well, it's like, I was hoping you'd be like, oh, you wouldn't think you'd be able to lift somebody, but actually the right amount of torque and this amount of people means that with two fingers, you can actually, no. You can convince yourself that you got an inch off the ground or something. You know, it just depends on the vibes of the group. If you're with a bunch of witches, you can pretend a lot. Um... We, so there's the, you know, we have a montage now if here's, it's all coming together, all the witchcraft, all the slumber parties and all the curses, the racist girl is losing her hair and it's, uh, the movie does a good job of, of showing how upsetting this is. And mm -hmm. I think the makeup is really good, uh, of her balding scalp, uh, uh, Nev Campbell, her scars are peeling off and that too looks really good and really satisfying. I wish I could do it myself. Just peel off all those scars. You do too. Don't lie. And not her scars are just sunburn. And then, uh, and, and the, um, stepdad, uh, Nancy's stepdad, uh, is about to attack her mom. And then she screams and she's like, no. And it causes him to have a heart attack and he dies. And then, um, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to mention this. Hmm. There's a, there's a little period where the other three girls is, uh, Right. Spells seem to have worked, but not Nancy's. And she's jealous. And she go so she goes and prays to Manon. But that's when it's revealed that her wish was not what we saw her do at the tree. It was to not be white trash. Rochelle tells us that. Because then it's her joke is like, I'm like, you're white. Get over it. So it's like. But her she says at the tree that she I wants know the power that. I know that. So it's a little bit it's disconnected. It, that's not. I mean, maybe because that's too hard to like show us that's happening, so they have to give us something more specific to see that her witchiness is happening. Yeah. Anyway. But she she uses her manal powers to kill her stepdad, and then they find out that she and her mom have inherited one hundred seventy five thousand dollars. And I, I like the mom. The mom's only in two scenes, but she's very funny. She's yeah. like, she's sort of crying. She's like, what a dear sweet man, and then she starts laughing and celebrating mm -hmm. with her daughter, and it's like. Uh, with what, even, even in 1996, I mean, $175,000 in much Los Angeles is not going to get you far at all. And, and they're spending it in the least efficient way. Right. Cause it's like, you're, you're just headed right back where you came from guys. <laughs> yeah. Cause they get a, they get a giant apartment and a high rise and the only thing in it is a jukebox and a sofa. And, um, they start experimenting with a uh, glamor, which can make their appearances transform or whatever. Starting with Sarah turning her hair, no, turning her eyes brown. Wow. And I like that her friends are underwhelmed with this. Yes. And I also would not know if somebody's eyes changed color. Correct. You'd have to change my head to a peacock's head for you to be like, something's different. Something's, hey, babe, what's, mm. hmm. Have you always had a beak? Okay. So is the next scene that they go to the beach, we just, they're There's just. I they're mean, just getting better. They're getting better at being witches. They're getting better. The The love spell with Chris, because now he's, he's stuck on. Sarah, mm -hmm. he's obsessed with her. He's in love, but doesn't know why. And he's hopeless. And Skeet Ulrich is pretty funny playing it this way. Cause he'll say stuff and be like, I don't know why I said that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm doing here, but, um, will yeah, you marry fine. me? I found it pretty realistic. Like, yeah, this is not that you know, none of us are good at knowing what it is that we want, especially if that thing were like forever. 
and he's like playing it. I mean, it's almost like a, like an AI that has its, you know, its core programming and just has to obey. There's no, there's no reason to it. It's just like, well, I have to, I'm in love with her. So she ran away from me. So I have to chase after her and it it can even turn violent, but it's, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's starting to boil and they go back to the witch store to like ask the witch lady, uh, uh, how can we undo a love spell? And she's like, you can't, you That's can't undo a love spell. What, what you put out it, whatever happens, happens after that it has to run its course, which then immediately makes me think of like them when they're forties and they're married and they have, he's just been pining over her for so long. And then he just, it runs its course. And he's like, where the fuck am I? <laughs> what has, so anyway, how long does that take? Um, and it is when we learn the very important thing, which if you are a witch with a witch store and you're selling all these witch books to witches, uh, I do feel like you should have a big sign behind you that says, whatever you put out, you will get back three times three. <laughs> like, I feel like that. Sh- hey, 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 I want you to buy the book. I want you to have a good time with the book. I hope you enjoy the book. But Los much- Angeles is already a shit show. Can you not? Ask for all the powers of Satan or whatever it is you're going to do because you're going to cause like, you know, a fire or a riot. How much (gasps) product, how much, that's, yes, that's why. They cause Rodney King. Um, Yeah, I I don't think you're going to move much product that way, though. If you're like, hey, all this stuff in here is cursed. Don't, super don't buy it. It's not cursed. It's just put out good magic. Be a good witch. You know, a little sign with a little baby and it's got a white hat and it's like, be a good witch. And, you know, just like, just like hang in there, baby. Do your magic. But like peace and love, not curses and heart attacks. Everyone assumes they're going to be a good witch. Everyone assumes Mm. they're just going to be doing good in the world. I think Nancy had... No, No, not Nancy, but she's exceptionally evil. But, you know, in some ways, the real villain is this witch store owner. Why have a witch store? Like, how you have to trust all these that all these people are going to go out and do and, and you know, obey your very uh, True. cryptic warnings. And why why are they allowed to be under 18 doing this? Why? No. You shouldn't... No child witches. That seems not a good idea. And Nancy, like, sees a book at the store and she's like, look, it's a picture of the sea. We got to go to the sea and we invoke Manal. Invoke, we him. invoke. The The movie, you know, has lots of things where it's like, well, now we're going to invoke Manal. And it's like, but didn't you already do that? No, no, no. Now we're going to invoke no. Manal. No, oh, oh gotcha, yeah, gotcha. And it's like, you're going to get to the end of your witch stuff. You, I feel like you guys are really kind of like, it's only been three months and you guys are like plowing through it. So just like slow down. <laughs> you're trying to get all the power of the one and only God that you're witching it out to so um you guys are gonna get bored so tell me about invoking Manal. what what happens hell to the power of the power of the steve that's what they say um okay it's well they're powerful ladies so not everyone could get in a circle and do this it's also very complicated you have to read a book so they all go to the beach i guess they need to be near nature magic's all about being connected to the or, or outside um and they all just have to say their their little easy chant and they also each bring an exotic animal so somebody do. has a clownfish they that probably do. costs three hundred dollars right for a clownfish. they do need to go to some sort of pet store beforehand and then bring it with him also i don't I mean, i'm sure i knew that this happened but it is it was funny this time that after they all say their thing and they complete they complete the northwest by southwest thing they're doing there um that nancy then gets just struck by lightning no one comments on it she's just <laughs> completely struck by lightning a lot of stuff hey she's walking on water that's that's you know. well their faces tell it all matt okay it is it is odd she's walking on water um but this is when she Ver, 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 Versukas really turns it up. <laughs> really, whoo! She's hard to handle in these scenes. But it's I, I mean, it's it's all part of the charm for me. It's the package. Just the I'm your daughter now. <laughs> well, no. Before that happens, they stand in the circle. They call upon the guardians. Know, they each put up their hands, and then Robin Tunney puts oh. up her fucked up hands. Okay, yes, her hands are yeah fucking insane sorry i didn't know we were gonna dig into my issues with all that she does but she's and but what i noticed for the first time this time is that she's trying to have a moment with nancy she's trying to like tell her some real shit about herself about and that's when um that that that's when i wanted to kill myself and then but she's mentions a snake and then nancy's response is 
you know, the serpent is a very powerful being. You should respect it. And like, then you see like her, Sarah's face just sink. Like, what the fuck was that? I'm telling you something about my suicide and you're telling me to respect the serpent? And that's that's the first time I realized, oh, that's why she's not into it. Everybody else is like straight hands, pushing their power, hail to the south of the blah, the who. And then and then then you get to the last person, hail to the gods of the wash Oh, she's not into it as exactly. much. As okay. But she's a powerful natural witch, so it doesn't matter. It still completes the spell. Interesting. It still brings on the mano. But Nancy gets electrocuted. <laughs> Nancy, that's not a way to respond to somebody trying to open up to you about their suicide, about their suicidal ideation. It's when Sarah realizes these really aren't my friends. I, what have I been doing? This is all getting out of hand. People are getting hurt. Things are not going the way that we, we have too much power. It's affecting people's lives. And now we're doing more. She just feels like an unwilling participant. And, and then she's get, she's loaning. She's, she's making this happen for them. She's responsible. Nancy, you got to listen to something Lacey always says about how to have good dialogue with people. Relate, don't alienate. Relate, don't alienate. I just mean this is when it's this is when it's turning for Sarah. She that 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 thing that Nancy said to her was just like the straws. Like, okay, fuck this. This is this is not fun anymore, and it's not getting. We're not bringing us any closer. It's it's making all of you more. Uh, everything I liked about you, gone now. You're all assholes. I'm the same, and you guys are getting worse. Plus, now well, now you're walking on water. Now we got these sharks washing up on the shore, and you're like rubbing them and going, oh, Manon did this for me. I can feel them in my veins. This is, it's for my body. And it's like, what are you going to do with all these? You're going to bring them home? <laughs> yeah, that's what, yeah, like like RFK. I'll be like, what's, what's been, uh, Manon gave you these gifts. You're just going to leave them? Rude. No, again, that's not what RFK would do. He would, I mean, he would come back okay. later, at least. <laughs> I'm back with my car. Oh my God. I'm going to do a sick prank at Central Park. All and right. then after this, they're in the car, they're riding home and Nancy's being a little extra and, and, and Sarah's complaining. She's like, Bonnie, you're mean now. Although we haven't seen her be mean, have we? Just empty. Not mean. No, just just kind of just no. I don't think she says mean. I think she just says like vain or like self obs you know, and that's when she's like, I think I'd or, or, I've I spent most of my life ugly. I think it's time I get to Yeah. She's just more like, Bonnie, you're there's not much substance to you anymore and all you guys do is giggle and laugh and they they just turn into idiots. And she giggles in response and then says, I'm sorry. Yeah. A lot of Canadian coming out in this movie. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, as later on, Sarah agrees to go on a dinner date with Skeet Ulrich, but instead he takes her to a makeout point and then he turns into a sexual predator because again, he's like an artificial intelligence who has the right. AI programming of pursue her. You love her. And this even turns violent. And maybe like there's something in him deep down that knows this is a weird thing that I've, I, I'm oddly pulled to this person. Maybe if I just fuck it, maybe if I just fuck this thing, <laughs> It'll stop. Like, you know, I could see him convincing himself of that. There's a um, sorcerer's apprentice sort of thing where they like you can unleash a magic and not know how to contain it. And that's how Nancy's feeling or uh, Sarah uh, Robin Tunney is feeling. And she's always been scared of her powers and, or, or, or just, you know, conceal, don't feel. Um, and these these ladies told her just to feel it all. It is it is it is a hard power to have. Doesn't seem fun to be a witch, I must say. No, and the, her friends are like, or no, Nancy hears about Skeet Ulrich attacking her, and he's like, "We're going to get revenge on that son of a bitch," and chases him down at a party. And this is where you can see Nancy doesn't even want all of her power. She's already bored. Like she's super pumped to hear that someone did a bad thing because she's like, I want to play. Cause it's like, she's not like, Oh no, Sarah, I'm so worried for you. It's just like, Oh, this is a person I don't like. And they just did the worst thing they could do. Let's kill him. Yeah. So like she's so bored with all of her powers already. So she just goes to fuck with this guy at a party and ends up and killing him. The most beautiful bedroom i've ever seen um for for you know teen fucking with a lit fireplace already going roaring every time we've ever lit a fireplace it was an ordeal it took a long time it filled the house with smoke it yeah. was too it was really hot they're hot they don't tell you this you need a castle if you're gonna have a fireplace otherwise 
too hot. Um, so he she just like starts yelling at him and she's like, sorry, 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 my ass. She does a glamour and pretends to be Sarah. And then that makes him make out with her hard. And they're making out for 15 minutes. I saw the clock when they started and then when they stopped. And then she turns back into Nancy and he's like, oh, yeah, cooties. And then, then that's when she just, you know, she starts levitating. It's not chill. Um, and she does the scary pointy boots rubbing along the ground. Still the most haunting part of the entire fucking movie. And uh, kills him. Yep, he's dead. So dead. Sarah's sad about this. What they, wow, they can tell you're gonna cry. Wow. Yeah. And they're like, she's gonna she's gonna leave the circle. We don't we can't have that. We need mm. to kill her or something. She and so they move. start haunting her her dreams and glamoring all over her. And she's they everywhere. Uh uh Sarah's like, I'm gonna try to just cast a spell on Nancy, gonna bind her from doing any harm to anyone, including herself. But she's just Nancy knows that Sarah's trying to do this. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work. She's like, I'm going to kill you for trying to bind me. In the old days when a witch betrayed her coven, they would kill her. So look out. Watch your ass. And it really freaks Sarah out that Nancy, because of the level she's gone up to, can tell when Sarah's taken an action against her. And I'm I'm sure that Lee's are feeling like, what What can I do? I feel like she goes to the good witch uh way later than she should she's <laughs> always have gone to that good witch that's um, a good point yeah she goes right now and she, she's like oh they're trying to kill me what do i do that's when she runs with her ju- <laughs> Ow. that's when she runs with her fucking mannequin head and her like borrowed parts and she's just like 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 she was just assembled that day and, she, and her jacket's <laughs> floppy, off of her shoulder yeah like, flappy oh. arms uh yeah tina belcher tina belcher like- arms but worse. Runs to the witch store. He's like, oh, Miss Witch, you gotta help me because my me what's friends. Behind the curtain. Behind the curtain is a temple built on a sacred site. In LA. With lots of magnetic energy. Do you know how hard it was for me to get this real estate? It used to be a pay less shoes. Done. The witch lady says, You have to invoke Menon. And she's like, But my evil friend did that. It was bad. She's like, No, no, no. You need to invoke Menon for good. Uh, for good reasons, uh, not evil reasons. Uh-huh. Oh, okay, good. Uh, th- so they start to try to invoke Mano. And because um <laughs> because Nancy's already got a direct line to him, she feels the invoking and causes a big fireball to go <sighs> through the store, but it's just a glamour. But it, it gives you the feeling of like, okay, this bitch gonna blow it up. We better sit. Uh, I need to run away. And then she runs. Runs all the way home to Sarah her house in the sit the in the hills and, and gets a phone call from Nancy and she's like, turn on the TV. And we're best friends now. So I'm just looking out for you. There's no trick here. She turns on the TV and it's a news broadcast saying that her parents were on a plane. Her father and stepmother were on a plane to San Francisco and it crashed and they're dead. Now this doesn't turn out to be true. This too is a glamour. Glamour. But Very glamorous. Thinking, when you're glamoring a TV show, do you have to like design? Do you have to write out a script? Do you have to come up with every edit and camera angle? And oh, that's a good ask. Good point. Thank you. It is a good asking point. Thank, thank you for that ask. Uh, so now the, they come back. They're going to fuck with her. The house fills up with snakes and spiders and scorpions. And I, it's really creepy. I could forgive all of it if there weren't roaches. Hmm. As soon as the scorpions are a problem. I do. I do feel a little uncomfortable. I have a problem with crustaceans. I don't like crabs. I don't like crawfish. I like to eat them. I do not like to see them walking around. I don't like an exoskeleton. Is what I'm trying Scorpions to are not crustaceans. Well, but they seem crusty to me. Uh, they are arthropods like crustaceans, mm-hmm. but they're arachnids. They're closer to spiders than they are to crustaceans. Pardon. Apologies. No I don't problem. like their crunchy shell. I don't like the idea that if I step on them, they go, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that at all. Um, 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 um. It is effective. And, and of course, I've got your uh, Steven Spielberg quote or whatever, whenever, what we learned after doing our um, Temple of Doom episode that it's however many snakes you think you need. <laughs> Quadruple it. Yeah. It's like five, 20 snakes sounds like a lot. And you put them in a pile and you're like, that's nothing. We have all those other square footage. Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm thinking of like these different, they do it cleverly though, though like, like to show that there's a whole lot. They're just kind of, spilling out of a toilet well you can put a lot of shit in the toilet and then put some bugs on top to get that effect they show them coming out of the grate on the side of the wall again you only need a few for that to be pretty good they come up out of the drain only need a few and and then they're up on the 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 windows it it gives the illusion of there being just 
13 feet of insects, but it's really just they're piled up on the si- on the sill of it or whatever. I don't know. Plus, just, you can just move the same handful of snakes from shot to shot oh to yeah, shot. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just effective use of bugs and arthropods. It's very well done yes. for, for Arth- Andrew Fleming, the director. Andrew Fleming. The, the, the Spielberg story was on our Raiders of the Lost Ark episode. We talked about how Spielberg was asked for the snake scene in the in the tomb, how many snakes, Stephen, uh, how many snakes do you want? And he's like, I 2000. I don't know. I have no idea. And they're like, okay, 2000. And then they send 2000 snakes to them and he looks, they spread them everywhere. And he's like, this is, this isn't a lot actually. Right. This looks like, this looks like 2000 snakes. I need seven. I wonder, but I'd like to know where they, that is what I'd like to know. And the scene that we are familiar with in that movie, how many is that? Can I see the invoice? I want to know how many snakes. And what did you pay per snake? Is it by the pound? These are all questions. You can't argue that those are questions. Oh, and so this is probably the scariest stretch of the movie when I was a kid. Um, They are not being nice. These are, I I think it bothered me just as much that her friends were being mean as it did that she might die in this scene. (laughs) Just like, those were your only friends, Sarah. Oh, man. And now they want you dead. And you have to go to school with them later. Ew. I know. Oh. It's not like she makes new friends. No, she just seems to have a nice relationship with her father after this. You know, helps get the groceries out of the car. I think that's nice. Um, all right. So they're going to make it look like well, they write a note saying, sorry, I killed that boy and love Sarah. And so they're going to blame her for his death and make it look like she had a suicide. But luckily they cut her the wrong way. So she's not bleeding out too fast. And so she runs upstairs and the, it's interesting the limits of the magic because they don't want to chase her upstairs. Like that still seems dangerous to them. Like, yeah, we can float. Yeah, we can make you see things that aren't there. But they really only know a couple tricks. And it's like once she realizes these are glamours, these things aren't real, it's going to stop being effective. So we've already... You girls, you go up and see what she's doing. <laughs> I'll stay down here. I'm chill. I'm fine. But they're still scared of Sarah. Um... So all Sarah has to do is a reverse glamour and make uh, Rochelle see her hair that she hasn't lost and, and burns have come back on Bonnie and she looks like freaking Deadpool. And um, they run out because they're vapid. Mm-hmm. Not all they care about is the things that they've gained in this the three months. The glamour of witching. And Sarah at this point invokes Manon, but for good. And she also... Yeah tunes into the power of her dead mother, who was a witch herself. Mom and Manon, together we Mm -hmm. shall triumph. And Nancy comes up to attack her, but Sarah uses her super witch powers, makes makes Nancy turn into snakes and bugs, like the Oogie Boogie Man. And uh, and Nancy gets freaked out. She's like, look, I'm sorry. Things got out of hand. I'm going to go now. I'm just going to go home. Okay, thanks. Bye. I love you. Goodbye. you, okay? Yeah. But then. I bind you, Nancy. But it starts. So, like, Nancy's like, I will figure out a way to fucking kill you later. But as soon as she turns it on her and is threatening to take away the powers that Nancy has gotten, now she's pissed. You will not bind me, white witch. And that's when the cool... Everything flies at the wall and clothes in the dresser. It's and, exhausting. It's too much. Oh, okay. I feel like the movie's out of steam at this point. All right. She wins. She wins the she witch battle. She wins. And forever puts poor fucking white trash Nancy into a mental, a mental institution for the rest of her life. I don't think this is a fair ending, but whatever. Just kill her. This is, this is not nice. Just kill her at this point. Should she have to be in this place? Plus you bound her. She'll be fine. She can't hurt anybody or herself. And I think it's nice that she says you can do no harm to others or, or yourself. Herself, right. Well, this doesn't look like she's having the greatest time. Yeah. It okay. seems like she's harm getting harmed herself. But yeah. And then uh, the other two come over and they're like, hey, hey, Sarah, what's up? Do you, you still have powers? And she's like, yes, I do. Motherfucker. And makes lightning come down. And they're like, we and don't have tree powers. Fall. And they run away. And that's the end of the movie. Okay, and the moral of the story is, don't move to L.A. So that was The Craft. Oh my God. Wow. We did it, you guys. I can feel you all over my face. 
What are your final thoughts and your star rating for The Craft, 1996? I love this movie. I will always love this movie. This movie is a part of me. This movie is my no, and it's in me. Man, all. It's all, yeah, it's in you. I it's can a 4. feel 4. it. It's 4.5. Jesus Christ. That's go- a lot. Yeah, I'm going fully off of sentimental reasons. Mm. This is not, I'm not using my critic brain, and I don't have to use it when I don't want to, Matt. Mm. I'm an all-powerful witch. That's true. Um, I can only use my critic brain. Oh, my God. Shut up, Matt. Uh, just just for for my only analysis of movies is the extent to which I enjoyed it, and I enjoyed this three stars right. worth of enjoyment. I think it's perfectly solid. I think perfect solution to uh, bump this up is swap Nev Campbell for Robin Tunney, and now you're cooking. Now you got a more charismatic uh, lead who we've seen in many screen movies is capable of hand, of shouldering that kind of weight in a way that I don't think Robin Tunney could at the time. Yeah, and it it can better balance out all the all the heat that uh for for so bulk is bringing did yeah she, because she's turned to 11 and robin tunney can't yeah, turn can't, up past eight uh, can't it's yeah, not it. balance it out yeah but these things do not bother me they make me like it more yeah i like all the fucked up weird shit too i mean i like Manal. i like the fucked up hands i like the way she <laughs> runs uh just wish it were a little more entertaining a little scarier or a little more of a sweet you're a little sweeter I don't yeah know. like it, it, you're right two it, in between there yeah there does there there's not enough heart at the end but there's not enough lack of it throughout so yeah I, I know yeah but no it's it's fun I, I, I hated it the first time we saw it I liked it a lot more this time three stars perfectly, three stars pretty good I'll take perfectly fine mm-hmm. movie all right in a week right. November 1st the spooky season is gone mm-hmm the even spookier season of election season, <gasps> which I predict will last through January 20th, maybe further. Maybe maybe we'll have two presidents, you know, like when there's multiple claimants to the throne. Uh-huh. Somebody sets up their own kingdom in the north and someone rules in the south. So the movie Civil War, 2023. Mm, something better than that. But okay. uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe we won't even have this resolved by Inauguration Day. Anyway, to anyway. celebrate the election in the United States, we're covering the picture Election, the movie Election starring Matthew Broderick and Reese Witherspoon, directed by Alexander Payne. Episode 135, November 1st, 2024. We election. love us. We love us some Reese Witherspoon on this podcast. We've done her a fair amount. Tell a friend about this podcast, please. Don't tell them to listen to this episode, but tell them to listen to some of our better Aww. episodes. We're uh, just a little low E today. You know, sometimes your kid doesn't sleep. What are you going to fucking do? Yeah, Not record a podcast? Sometimes you've just been doing too many podcasts. Load Bearing Beams Pod on YouTube is where you can watch us. You can follow me on Letterbox at Matt Stokes Nine. You can follow Letterbox. You can follow Lacey on Letterbox at Load Bearing Lacey. You can follow my band Rural Route Nine on Twitter at Rural Route Nine, or listen to our music on Spotify. The Joy of Averages is where you can find the music that you hear on the show Rural Route Nine. That's it for me. Oh. Okay, I love you as much as Manal does. Goodbye. Three, four. Everybody, love Mary Beams, love